Hi! In this video I have put together what I think is a really useful resource for you if you're planning to go for a job in teaching. Piecing together lots and lots of interviews and feedback from social media platforms, I have made up what I believe are the five best tips you should consider to make you stand head and shoulders above other candidates. All of the information gathered has been shared by head teachers, deputy head teachers, experienced teachers and business managers, so you can be sure it will be of value to you. 1. A common question that might come up in your interview will be asking to share what weaknesses you have. The panel want to find out how well the applicant knows themselves and how honest they can be regarding that in their answers. They'll be looking to see if you can effectively communicate how you think other colleagues might describe you or if you are willing to share awareness of what friends or family may consider to be your most frustrating personality trait. Showing constructive self-criticism is a must for continual professional development. The panel will then likely want to find out what strategies you use that will make a positive impact on your effectiveness at doing your job you should definitely be prepared to show that you are aware of where your growth lies and tie in how this links with your CPD or PRD if possible. 2. Researching the school is definitely up there with being one of the most important things you can do. Look through the school's website and find out what the vision and values are for the school. What have the children recently been doing and can you link this with any experience that you've had? You should be able to find out how they did on their last Ofsted report. Perhaps behaviour is a concern and this could be something to focus on in your preparations. How would you be able to pull the Ofsted ratings up if you were hired? Can you back up your claim with examples of how you've managed behaviour personally or collectively? By spending time researching the school, it will absolutely become apparent in your interview that you are interested in this school and you can also prepare questions as you do your research. This is one sure way to stand out from the other applicants. 3. Ask yourself why you want this job. If the answer is primarily because you want to climb the career ladder, make more money, or because the school's just around the corner from your house, then this won't go down too well with the panel. The interviewer wants to know your motive for being a teacher. Teaching must be student-centred rather than teacher-centred, often leading to more work, and the panel want to make sure you understand this and are willing to go above and beyond for every pupil in your class. 4. Think about presentation. The panel will superimpose their impression of how you present to them to how that would go down in a classroom. Dress smartly and show confidence in your manner that would inspire trust that you would exhibit the same confidence when teaching a class. Practice in the mirror or record yourself to see how you come across and then you can make whatever changes you think necessary. The best interviewees deliver their responses in a relaxed and personable manner but also show professionalism. The interviewers I talked to said they had many female candidates arrive in office-style smart suits, which look great until you sit to read children a story, and then they realise that these might not be the most practical clothes to wear for this purpose. Some talked about a candidate who'd come for an informal look at the school, and he'd come straight from the beach in board shorts, flip-flops and so forth. Just real basics which blow your chances. There was also mention of clubbing outfits, snazzy gym leggings and shoes that resembled flip-flops. 5. When interviewing, certainly in Edinburgh, Scotland, but I suspect all over, the interview panel use a pro forma sheet that they tick off as you answer. How it works is that they compile a list of questions. Then they generate the key points that the answers should cover. As a candidate answers, they tick off the points they hit and add in additional comments that the candidate might make they feel enhances their answer. At the end, they add up all the ticks and look at the areas left unticked. From that, they take the best candidate. They have to be meticulous and able to prove that they took the best applicant in case anyone checks up. Also, your application form might get you an interview, but counts no further, 
so don't assume that the interview panel will remember what's in the application. Make sure you mention key points from the application at an interview if you want to be certain that the panel knows about them. Use a search engine to research the best answers around key areas like behaviour, raising attainment, relationship with parents, planning, safeguarding and so forth, and then tailor to suit your experiences personally. This is probably why they keep the same questions to use time and time again. Another piece of advice would be to try to link the question from the bigger picture to you specifically and back it up with examples. You might consider sharing your knowledge of this link by beginning your answers in the following ways. National policy states, In Edinburgh there's a requirement to I've seen such and such a school do, while another school does. I have found X and the impact was Y. Next time I would Z type of answer. You need to include impact and next steps. If you're able to chat with a business manager or management involved with the interview panel, they may be able to tell you how the setup is in your region. I hope this video was helpful to you and all the best if you have an interview coming up. Please click the like button if you found this video helpful and be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos just like this one.